visit ontabletop.com and comment on all three days of the Flames of War Bootcamp to be in with a chance of winning one of three Flames of War bundles. So we've reached the end of Saturday here at the Flames of War D-Day Bootcamp. What a day it's been, Warren. Yep. What a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been amazing. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I've, uh, it, look, the boot camp has caught up with me. Three three weeks of intensity has caught up with me. You're tired. I was uh, I was watching this game. Exactly. You were just watching tired. the match. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's been it's been great. Do you know what we'll do now, though? Yeah. Let's let's finish. We we started a vlog series. Yeah. About how we, we were going to build Normandy. Okay. Right. Yep. How about we f we show them the finish? And, oh! and we actually we actually finish the vlog series, not like that we would ever leave a vlog series. No, finished, no, we're know? never <laughs> gonna do that. Such a good idea. If you want to see how we got on and got the tables and all set up, there's a whole series like he's mentioned, but this is how they turned out. Hey everyone, it's the weekend of the Flames of War boot camp. Oh, the D-Day one, exciting stuff. And we have finished setting up. The last time you've seen us, I was busy making hedges. We were bacaging away, dumping stuff in tubs. <laughs> bacaging away. One, yes. one of my favorite jobs. Yes. And now it's all out in the table, which we'll show you in a sec. But just before we get stuck into that, we didn't cover that. Warren came in and he was like, ooh, bacage, why don't you just do that? Yeah, to, the, to the hedges. To the, to the hedges. actual hedges and don't stick them down. So actually what you're going to see in here around the tables and stuff today, a lot of this is in here just to a speed it up. Yeah, well it was really really quick to do because it only needed one well, one coat of PVA. So you went in, it was the same procedure, um, you didn't stick it to anything, you just grabbed your strip, Yeah. you went in, you clipped it with the with the clippers yeah. to uneven it. Well, heavy scissors, I think we use like uh, garden shears. Garden shears, always, always good. Um, <laughs> then you go in and you give it a really good heavy coat of PVA along the bristles yeah and then you just dunk it in and bob's your uncle you leave it if you want you could give it another coat of uh, watered down pva so pva and water just over the top of it all to seal it um and to to stop bits kind of dropping off mm -hmm. we okay. did that to most of them but not yeah. all of them so. let's get a look at the tables this is attack on v1 castle okay so a lot of flames players and a lot of historical players love everything historical and anybody that knows me knows that i also like to do just a bit of weird and something that's maybe bubbling in my imagination and i just want to see what it would be like so i had whenever we were attacking normandy i've um i just thought to myself normandy is full of big amazing norman castles and forts and stuff like that yeah wouldn't it be amazing if there was an old ruined fort because we've got a we've got a kind of like an old ruined castle near where we live mm. and i've often thought what would it be like if there was your enemies were camping in there and camped it was like a, a headquarters and you had to attack it where they had the benefit of modern strategic tactics modern strategy and tactics and the benefit of a castle <laughs> i think it would be amazing yes yeah, so what i thought was we would have it that it's where the the Germans are. It's where their batteries of V one uh, rockets are yep. taken off. Doodle from. bugs. Doodle bugs. And here's all uh, an encampment yep. where they, they're camped in. So you you put it down to begin with. Yeah, and it looks like a castle. And then you start putting some of the little modern bits in, like tents and V ones and stuff. And then it starts to look like Wolfenstein, man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's I like it. Mm. And then we had these little bits of um, built up barricades and stuff they were sitting about which was a great way of blocking you know the big holes and stuff because like if you were in a castle and it was a big wall segment that's falling yeah. down you're going to build some extra defenses, defenses here yeah. and there so the castle is fully modular it's a beautiful modular kit um from uh, printablescenery.com yep that we scaled down to 60 percent of its original size yeah <laughs> um we we just went with um a beautiful 28 mil terrain scaled it down to 60 percent of its original size so not 60 percent down it is we're printing it at 60 percent rather than 100 percent yeah now one thing they do have is they have a free file on their website called sid scale sid scale and this allows you to actually have a essentially a really rough figuring of a soldier that is for the different scales so you can actually eyeball it as well yeah so you so don't just go by the numbers when you've sometimes loaded, the sculpt can be a little different when you've loaded it into your print bed and you've laid it out you can bring sid scale in and you drop him in and you move him around just to make sure that the scale's kind of right. Um, we'd probably go a little bit bigger, but we were happy enough with 60% across the board because it kept everything 
maybe a little bit smaller, but it also means it's a little bit easier to pack away. Yeah, well, so. I mean, like, what it also allowed me to do was I was able to make my print beds as efficient as possible because I was able to double up on three-story houses per print run, which was just a lot quicker. And considering for this project, we have been printing non-stop for three to four months now, so... Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been there in spirit, man. <laughs> I've been there in spirit. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Well, I will move along, will we? Yeah, so this one, we wanted to introduce some rail track, okay? Um, so the rail track is uh, Gale Force 9. It's basically Flames of War rail track. And then just using a little bit of uh, black grit. Now, the black grit on this, um, uh, Justin made. Yeah, basically, I, I took and reused a, a technique that, that Lloyd had shown because... It was at the end of one of the days. This stuff here, we're talking about. And Lloyd turned around and went, can I get some, some like black sand or something to go between the railroads? We've got some in the, the, the hobby lab. I couldn't find it, so I thought, I got about I could just make some. Yes. So I just grabbed some of our kiln dried sand and started dusting and shaking it the way Lloyd showed you in one of the earlier vlogs. Isn't it amazing how well sand actually takes paint? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it it's is. basically just little stones and you just spray yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But so. the good thing is because we've used like a duct tape underneath this stuff to mm. keep it all together. So what you ended up with is sometimes you could see a little bit of shiny grey underneath. Mm -hmm. So just doing that filled it in. And even if you weren't doing that, it just fills in any grass from the table underneath yeah, yeah. it. And it makes it look like one big purposefully ballast. Well, I mean, like, how, much, how many times do we look at a table and go, it's all right. Then we do the blending step mm -hmm. with all of our loose... Uh, Scatter and it just looks great. Yeah, we got our gravestones and everything. Yeah, yep. so we, we do, we've put in some little graveyards again. We've had we're leaving gaps and stuff just so to, to make it easy for soldiers uh, on bases to, to fight in and among it. But the gravestones are a cracking little kit, fifteen mil scale from foreground. Yep, very quick to put together. Walls that we were sent in from Gale Force Nine. Yes, yeah, so Gale Force Nine had uh, uh, kindly did us up just a few extra walls. They're just resin cast walls with a little bit of a, a paint job on it. Mm -hmm. But you can see loads of our bocage being used and our hedges and that, that what that does is a really fast way of edging roads edging rail tracks yep. and giving a nice additional green color because um uh, foliage foliage makes all the difference in a gaming table at least to me and oh. having having that extra foliage just livens it up and makes it makes a gaming table come to life uh, absolutely for me. because even when these even when these tables are full chock a block with with hedges and roads and stuff like that. I totally get what you're saying about the foliage because once when the trees are not here, yes. it looks really empty. And when the trees go in, combined with the hedges and stuff, all that foliage just comes together to make it look epic. Yeah. Into our first little village square. Yes. I love this table, okay? So this is using something a little bit different. So um, a while back, um, we were in a kind of like a one of them cheaper cash and carry kind of places. Yeah. And we found uh, little houses, little ornament houses. Here, and I'll pick one up and give you an example. Yeah. So these are just little ornament houses. Is there a label on the bottom? If you check, there might yeah, be. Yeah, on the inside. Oh, there is, but I can't read yeah. it. It just says made in China. Made oh. in China. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> little ornament houses, um, and they were going, they maybe part of a closing down sale, or just some ornament that they brought in, and we thought, do you know what? We'll pick them up. So we've picked them up, we've used them over the years, and then we thought, you know what, as a homage to how good this train has served us yeah. over the years, we'll, we'll do one table of it and just do a little village square. And I love this. I feel so warm. When it I, does, doesn't it? I, it, it there's, there's just, it reminds me... It reminds me of a little village in the in the south of Ireland called Red Cross. Never been. And uh, there's uh, an old famous pub. It's long closed um, by an old gentleman. I can't remember his name, but they had no seats. You sat on barrels. They had no fridges. All the beer was warm. <laughs> but people from all over the world had scribbled their names on the walls. <laughs> it was an utter <laughs> you had to. You, you had to go out to the, the best back. pubs, though. Oh, it was, but it was amazing. But this little village reminds me of Red Cross. Just for before we move on, I think it's a good example. You know, for the purposes of the boot camp, see why none of this is moving around. Yeah. Mm. Because I went round and I taped Everything. all the, the roads together. I taped the hedges to the roads, and even over here, Colin, come on over here. I actually put a bit of tape under that, and then back in under the mat. Yeah. yeah. So if you're doing like modular terrain for a big event or something. Tape is your friend. Yeah, uh, even always this stuff. A See couple, the way? couple of rolls of duct tape, and uh, you can use that then to chat to see it. Because remember, the more bits you tape to one another, the less the whole thing will move. Yeah, and yeah. you don't need an awful lot of tape either. So and then we just had some of our flock left over, mm -hmm. which then we went along and just dropped in the edges. Because sometimes, like here, 
Just because I've moved it, you can see a bit of shiny tape. Can you? Well, if you're higher up, you can. There yeah. you go. Can you see it? And I'll just, oh. You well, can you can imagine more. it's there. <laughs> and then that just goes in over the top. Bang, gone. Off you go. Yeah. Happy days. So, that, um, uh, about similar techniques then over on this side of the house. Again, now all the buildings over here are all 3D printed, uh, except for the rail station, which is another wonderful uh, model that comes out of the Flames of War range. Uh, I think there is this... one quick difference to the houses on this particular side, because we did these as single story houses. Yes. Yeah. So with the 3D printable stuff, you can just take a top layer off and drop it down one. And what that meant is that we were getting three houses per print instead of two houses per print. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it started to speed us up. In, and I in like the this table week, a lot so. too because Jerry brought in this book mm -hmm. about Normandy and it had aerial photos and stuff. Yeah. And I was looking at, oh, the wiggle in the road looks just like what we've been doing. Yeah. And I was dead chuffed with it. Remember, we have a full vlog series of the build up to this where we've been showing you the techniques that we've used to build all the roads and things. So the roads are built from uh, wallpaper and self adhesive vinyl tiles. Yeah. It's a, everything we've done. It's been a fast process. It's been a process that we can break down and store. And, and most importantly, it's it's been a process that I'm really proud of, and I'm really yeah. I'm really I would uh, gladly say to anybody to play on mm. uh, on the gaming tables we've produced for this. This table here is a good example of how we played with the roads and the rail tracks. Yeah, because the rail tracks cut through in two places here, mm -hmm. and then you come up with this clever idea, of Warren, of taking off some strips of what we'd made made for the roads and just dropping them in, like mm. yeah, Do you know the way they sort of they, yeah, the humps. they hump that road. Mm -hmm. bit. And then it's this, a bit brutal looking, but hey, hey, it's set on terrain. It gets the job done. This is all taped. Oh, yeah, it is taped. But then we just slice the road and drop the rail track between it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way we don't get a big lump where the track's going oh, over the road like that. Yeah. I see people have already started getting their minis and yeah, stuff well, like this one. People have started to, to lay out minis and they, they've even had a, a couple of games. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, no, Colin, Colin, don't do that. Don't do that. We're in Normandy. We're in Normandy, oh, and those are my ones. Oh, there, there's some Soviets oh, in there. Oh, the Soviets are so. there. Yeah, <laughs> you really think I'm letting you have a boot camp and I'm not getting a game on with something? Uh, I've actually done uh, some unboxings for all the new starter sets with the guys from Battlefront for the boot camp, so if you're about to tune in for that. So um, another rural uh, rural area, a bit more dense uh, in terms of forestry. Um, again, I've never been to Normandy, so we've uh, based this on pictures and places that I have been which is in Ireland, because yes. I, I don't like to fly. So um, the guys hate it, but I love it. My <laughs> tall erection um, here is a tower. It's a defense tower by monks. So the narrative here is that this was always a religious site. And before the church was built, this was a monastery. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, to protect themselves from Viking raids, because the monks had to get the idea from somewhere. Yeah, the Norman monks. I don't know. Okay, I mean, built it's... built a tall tower that they could hide their beer in and their wine and uh, stay out of the way of Vikings. I mean, it's fun and all, but I'm not sure I'm ever going to get used to looking at it. Yeah. I love it, man. I, and do you know what? It's all that matters. <laughs> it's, it's this, this, this one kit sums up why we don't let Warren build the IKEA furniture in here. Because it looks Instructions? Fun. Bah! What instructions? It didn't need instructions, man. It just needed glued one layer on top of the other. <laughs> it looks good to me. Right, right, that brings us to the end of the rural tables. Come on yes. over here, do you yeah. see what we did for the for the inner town? Yeah, so um, large town, because the, the, the fighting happened through them as well. So we decided to Look recreate a, a, a large uh, town. And we're hoping that our players are going to get a chance to um, play a big participation game on this. It started with the mats. Yes. So we got Gale Force 9 mats. This is the reverse side of the mats that we have used in the rural side. In the rural side, you'll remember the, the mats were more kind of stepland from what you would see in the, way over Eastern Europe and the, in the kind of the east, the battles in the east. Yeah, yeah. So they were very, very yellow. So we um, mixed up a green, um, a series of green uh, fabric dyes mm -hmm. and um, air gunned them on to, to, to tone, them. tone them to the color that we wanted. When it came to, we flipped over the other side, we found that the, the gray of these mats was just too 
Great. Too bright. I think too it was harsh. Too clean. Yeah. It blended perfectly well with the buildings and stuff as they come with the range. Yeah. But we wanted it to look like a town that's been bombarded, hence. Yeah, the footage that we had and the photographs we had seen, there was a lot of destruction. So we wanted to, uh, when we first built it, we, we thought, oh, we could go clean. And then we thought, no, let's get some destruction into this. And we put it out to you guys in the vlog. And the overall response was, yeah, let's do some destruction. Yeah. So we set to work on 3D printing. Um, a load of destroyed buildings. Yeah, which give is us... a variant you can pick up. Yeah, so again, printable scenery have a destroyed variant. Also, Lloyd has went in with clippers and, and destroyed buildings and went in and destroyed them even yeah, more. So. These two in particular used to have roofs and stuff on them. Well, that one definitely did, and then I just cut it on down. It's surprising how hard this plastic is, though. Yes, oh, the PLA, yeah. I yeah. couldn't believe when I started trying to try and clip that. It, it breaks clippers. So I did break be, a pair of clippers. Did you break a pair? Yeah, you've got, to be, <laughs> you've got to be careful. It can break clippers. So once we got all the 3D printed buildings, um, uh, if you, in the vlog, you'll see how we weathered these buildings. Um, we used the same weathering process on the 3D printed buildings after we had printed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we laid down the excellent rubble mixes, Lloyd, yes. that you had been making. We spent again. ages. Mark had the previous vlogs. Martin Laughing Boy came over and helped, so we set him to work with cutting little bits of wood for eight hours. <laughs> Looking around here and inside the building. And then we these. sprayed sand. Yeah. Sprayed it red because we knew in this part of the, the factory district, the buildings were red, so we're going to need some red dust to make it look like the bricks have just exploded when they yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah. So that's why there's a lot of red dust in around there. And then around the other buildings, there was sort of greys and blacks and browns and then at the very end i had this sort of ash stuff that i just sprinkled all over it and, it's, um, and it did a really nice as well it did so. a really nice effect because it landed on all the roofs yeah mm. and it looked like ash had gone into the air and then fallen down and settled back down so it was mm. like, i was looking like oh that helped really tie in any buildings that aren't even like have, don't have rubble and stuff because now it ties them from that uh, to, what's, had a bit of debris to on. what's lying on the mat and stuff yeah cracking job and then the final step then it was uh, tuning the light rigs that we have to give us a few different lighting effects mm -hmm. so i will go and switch those and i'll leave you guys to to talk about the the different effects so yeah just for, just while he's doing that come on over here we've got a church as well mm -hmm. this was a larger rubble mix it was kind of a last minute thing we thought oh we'll put the church in yes. so you won't have seen me do this you will probably have seen me actually filtering this to get a smaller rubble mix that we used. Yeah, but it kind of makes sense for the church because they would have been built with a faced stone. Yeah, and then we used the smaller stuff in there, but then when we come to do this, it didn't really look right. Mm -hmm. So we needed to get the, the big rubble mix in. And then the layout, right? You'll notice as you look around, I've made sure we spread buildings out. Like they're clumped together in little twos and threes and stuff like that. But every little block has a destroyed building because when you want to do this, you want to have an excuse. Oh, hey, we're going into light mode, special light mode. You want to have an excuse to throw down rubble mix and stuff all over the place. So as you'll see, it's slightly more kind of um, warm summer's uh, kind of morning, uh, summer's evening. So it just tones down a little bit and gives us a bit more kind of um, stronger longer shadows and things it again adds some texture to the whole um to the whole display and all of the, the gaming tables and then over here we went for a harsher kind of colder town light well it's that morning after the raid because the cold light of day you see yeah. the destruction so um um it's it, to try and give it just that 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 little bit of sense of something slightly colder slightly slightly darker yeah so it's really cool have we other lighting setups and we stuff do. We do. i can take us Whoop. through to night time so so gonna... this is what we're we're considering d-day night so d-day night is more of a twilight kind of a thing again you'll see we're starting to go um into the the the, the evening sunset um i particularly like this i, I think it's it's quite quite an exceptional um, series of colors and it just it really starts to give that sense of the the dangers creeping in you know because fighting at night is a dangerous thing I, I i love this side over in the city however at night time we wanted to capture the fires the uh, the, 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 yeah, the fact that there would have been 
fires burning. Yeah, yeah. that glowing night sky thing. That yeah. glowing night sky of fires, you know, because you know your your entire city, your yeah. town's on fire. Yeah. So this is more of a. There's more reds and oranges yeah. into this. Because so. even in your standard built-up town these days with all the street lights and stuff, when you go out at night, there's actually kind of an orangey tone going on. Yeah. But so if there's fires burning everywhere. That would mm -hmm. just be immense, the amount of colour. Yeah. And then finally then, um, if if uh, the boot campers decide, we can then go into uh, full night mode, which is basically a variation of this. Full night mode! <laughs> so full night mode is a little bit intense, um, but that is, uh, you know, we basically, um, yeah, it's there's a lot of blues um, and it's it's quite quite an intense thing to to play you need your torches for this whenever you're reading your rule books yeah. and the well, likes but Warren, it's it's interesting you remember band of brothers yes flash yeah ah oh, you uh, idiot no no <laughs> the callback whenever they jumped flash thunder no gods. no idea <laughs> no idea right so it is the so, weekend of yeah. the boot camp, as I illuminate myself, yes. as you can see me. Oh, you're a little bit the... Oh, <laughs> it, is the, there. it is the weekend at the minute, so come on over to the website. Yes. Go on tabletop.com, look for the live blogs. There's one for each day. There's a Friday one, a Saturday one, and a Sunday one, and there's some epic bundles that you can win by commenting yes. on those things. Comment, put your comments into each of the live blog posts. We'll be picking winners at ran one winner at random from each of the three days, and they're going to win themselves a Flames of War bundle um, of games, books, and uh, it's great. It is great. Class. I'm having a blast. Right. We'll see you over there. Visit ontabletop.com and comment on all three days of the Flames of War Bootcamp to be in with a chance of winning one of three Flames of War bundles.